the AES encryption cipher is described in chapter 5.1 of the NIST specification and outlined as a pseudocode in figure 5. Reading this pseudocode indicates that the data to encrypt is input in variable in. This input is an array of 16 bytes, as this specification defined the NB variable to be 4, representing the word size of the block, which is 4 words, or 16 bytes for AES. This input then initializes the internal state, with AES then going into a predefined number of rounds, 10 for 128 bit keys, 12 for 192 bit keys, and 14 for 256 bit keys, and with each round transforming this internal state. Before going into these rounds, an initial round key is added to the state, and in each round, bytes are substituted, rows are shifted, columns are mixed, and again, another round key is added to the state. This is concluded with a final round, not including the mixing of columns, and the internal state is then returned as the cipher of the data. The key used for the encryption comes in as part of the key schedule in variable W, which contains round keys for each of the rounds executed and with each round key derived from the actual key used. The internal state is a 4x4 arrangement of bytes initialized from the 128-bit input, and the final 128-bit cipher output of AES is the flattening of this 4x4 arrangement back into an array of 16 bytes, or 128 bits. The following demonstration shows how I proceeded to draft the implementation of the encryption cipher and implemented the internal state as given by this specification. For educational purposes, my aim was to write the Python code of the implementation very closely resembling the pseudocode description given in figure 5 of the specification. The internal state is initialized from the input data, which I delegated to a yet-to-be-implemented state from input bytes function. Adding a round key to the internal state requires the key schedule W, which my driver didn't provide me with, so I had this key schedule created by another yet-to-be-implemented key expansion function. With this key schedule, I could then add the round key to my state and proceeded to create the definition of the rounds to be executed. The number of rounds is determined by the key length, 10 rounds for 128 bit keys, 12 rounds for 192 bit keys, and 14 rounds for 256 bit keys, which I calculated accordingly, optimistically assuming the provided key is of an appropriate length and not handling wrong inputs. The loop for the rounds I then wrote based on another three yet to be implemented functions, subbytes, shift rows and mix columns. To write the final round, I had all I needed, except to being able to return the 128-bit cipher from the internal state, which I delegated to the bytes from state function to be implemented shortly.
First on my list of functions left to implement was the function turning the input to the internal state. Going back to chapter 3.4 of the specification, figure 3 explains how the internal state really is just a 4x4 byte arrangement from the 16 input bytes. This 4x4 state I decided to represent simply as a list of 4 bytes each initialized with the 4 byte blocks of the input. Transforming the internal state back to a byte string to ultimately get back the cipher, then required to just concatenate the rows of the internal state returned as a byte string. With this, I arrived at a syntactically correct Python program, but still obviously not a yet correct implementation of AES itself, as indicated by the filing test cases. From the encryption cipher, it was then clear that the next function left to implement was the key expansion function. <laughs> 